Sorry about that, guys. I wasn't intending to have a part two to this uh, <laughs> video, but uh, that was my mom who called me. I had to let her dogs out next door. Kind of important thing, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, all right, moving on, off tangent again. I, that tends to happen when stuff happens. You don't expect it to happen. Live video, folks. Okay. Uh, south region now. Um, we, I got through the Midwest. I got through the West. So now we're going to break down. I guess it was a good stopping point because I got through two regions. Now I'm going to share through the other two before we jump into the uh, bubble teams and their situations. Uh, south region. Um, my top seed is Miami. Um, again, undefeated in the ACC right now. Awesome team. Now, granted, they've had some close calls lately uh, to keep that perfect record in the ACC. They barely had to beat Clemson. I think they were close the game before that. So they've had a couple scares, but for the most part, Miami's still a, a really good team. The job that Jim Laranaga has done there is absolutely outstanding. Um, just great overall. Uh, I would have them going up against Mercer. Uh, they currently lead the Atlantic Sun Conference. And again, they've kind of come uh, out of nowhere because uh, I believe someone else was leading that conference for a long time. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast uh, was leading it for a while, and they're they're still kind of a game. I think they're a game back in the discussion. But Mercer now is taking the lead, and uh, they right now are in the driver's seat to lead that conference. Um, my eight nine matchup is Memphis and Missouri. Um, Memphis, of course, again rolling through Conference USA, twenty three and three record. Uh, the job that Coach Josh Passner has done there has been absolutely amazing, um, and, and their numbers are really solid. Um, they should be okay either way. Uh, Missouri, huge win for them against Florida. Um, they're now looking more and more like a tournament team. Uh, I have them now actually as one of my locks, so I think they'll be okay and be in the field. Um, granted, they have a lot to overcome after what happened with that loss to Norfolk State last year. Uh, so they got a lot, a little bit, a little bit to prove, but uh, big win for them. And uh, but they gotta learn to win on the road in neutral sites. That's their issue. They're perfect at home. They're bad away from home. So that's the thing they gotta solve before the tournament comes. Uh, otherwise, they might be again an early out. Uh, my five twelve matchup is Oklahoma State against Belmont. Um, and. Oklahoma State, again, a very solid Big 12 team. They had the win over Kansas this year. Uh, the Big 12 is also a very solid conference. going to get a lot of teams in, probably five, maybe six. Um, and, and Belmont, even though they, they switched conferences too, uh, for a while they were a big staple. Um, of what, what conference was Belmont in before? P Patriot League? I want to say something. They were they were in some major conference, and and then they switched to the Ohio Valley Conference, and now they are simply just rolling through it, and and they're a very solid team, twenty one and six record. Um, beat they have, they have a quality win. I think they beat Oklahoma earlier in the year. So, um, so very dangerous team. Um, they could be a potential dark horse upset pick as well. Uh, and then you got your my 413, that's Marquette going up against Louisiana Tech. Um, again, Big East, Marquette has a lot of quality wins this year. Um, dangerous, dangerous team. Louisiana Tech, though, perfect in the WAC. Now, the WAC, of course, very short. They're going to fall they're gonna fall apart as a conference next after this year because all the football realignment. But for Louisiana Tech to still be perfect in this conference, that's huge for them. <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, so big stuff there. Uh, for Louisiana Tech, and um, they would be the 13 in this region, at least in my projection. Bottom half of the South region, uh, I have Minnesota as a 6 seed out of the Big Ten. Look, and I know Minnesota, a lot of people are questioning them, but here's the thing about Minnesota, and yeah, they've taken a backslide of late, but their numbers are just too strong, and teams usually with really like really high numbers, like a, like top 20 numbers, don't usually miss the tournament. Their RPI is 15. Their strength of schedule is number one in the country. Minnesota has played the toughest schedule in the country. That is that doesn't miss the tournament usually with, with the solid record they have of 18 and 9. So I think Minnesota's safe. I think they'll be okay. It would take something honestly really drastic for Minnesota to miss this field. I have them playing the winner of one of those first round games between Temple and St. Mary's. Those are two of my last four in right now. Temple Temple has really come on of late and made a big time surge because Temple has some really solid quality wins. 
Um, they just beat, um, I think, a fellow uh, bubble team. Um, I think they beat either Charlotte or or you might, who did Temple beat? Oh, they, they beat LaSalle. Okay, they, they they beat LaSalle. I knew it was kind of a bubble team that wasn't safe. Um, so Temple beat LaSalle, and that was a huge win for them. Temple now has three top 50 wins on the schedule, including a win over Syracuse, which is huge, and they beat St. Louis, the conference leader. So Temple definitely looking really solid right now. St. Mary's, um, again, they're, they're not safe by any stretch, but they have 23 wins. Uh, you know, usually teams like that don't miss. But the problem with the resume is no top 50 wins to speak of. Their best wins are a sweep of BYU, which they beat BYU again last night. Um, but they're, the reason they're only really barely in the field right now is because of the fact that they have those 23 wins, because they have Gonzaga in their conference, because of the fact that other teams have fallen out and lost. That's the only reason why St. Mary's to me is in the field right now, because others have fallen short of their opportunities. So St. Mary's in for now, certainly not safe. It would be imperative of them to beat Creighton in the Bracket Buster game this weekend. If they can beat Creighton, that would be a definite boost to this profile. For St. Mary's. Um, my 314, Arizona against Davidson. Uh, Arizona always uh, seems to be a solid team um, in the Pac 12. Um, great team this year, 22 and 4 record. Davidson is the team that always seems to come out of the Southern Conference. Um, they're a 20 and 7 record team. Now, last year, I, I remember watching the so SoCon Championship game in Western Carolina, kind of that Cinderella story. Gave Davidson all they could handle, but Davidson pulled it out got back to the tournament, so Davidson just usually seems to find a way, and uh, it looks like they're going to be able to do that again this year. My 7-10 matchup. Gosh, I love this one. This would be a juicy matchup. Notre Dame against North Carolina. Are you kidding me? Who wouldn't want to watch that? Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the Grant brother from Notre Dame going up against McAdoo from North Carolina. And, oh, my gosh. It, it would just be – that would be a fun matchup to watch. Notre Dame is probably – you know, a lot of people question Notre Dame because their numbers are so low. But they have too many quality wins, I think, to get in the field. It's the opposite case with North Carolina. They don't have enough quality wins. Their only quality win is over to UNLV. But North Carolina's numbers are just way too strong and way too high that I don't think North Carolina misses this field. Now, granted – the NCAA did a mock selection exercise for the media this just past week, and North Carolina was omitted from that field. However, they had the, they had some teams in there that really aren't. They probably took into account some buy stealing and some, or bid stealing teams and some that kind of thing. So that's probably why they weren't in the field. But for me, as long as those there there aren't any bid stealers, North Carolina should be okay. Uh, but it really just hinges on whether well, it's why they're so low a seed as a 10 because really right now they don't have a whole lot on their resume to show for being safely in this field. So right now North Carolina in but certainly not safe. And my 215 matchup is Kansas and Niagara. Uh, Kansas, again, what more can you say about the job that Bill Self has done there at Kansas? Just an absolute outstanding job, strong team. Now granted, when it comes to the NCAs, except for the run that they had with the Mario Chalmers thing with beating Memphis, Kansas really has tended to flame out early when it comes to the NCAA tournament against the team. We've heard the stories, oh, the loss to Bucknell, the loss to Northern Iowa, um, you know, that kind of thing. The loss to VCU, I think, was in the last year a couple years ago. So they've, they've tended to really fall in short of expectations. So, you know, Kansas... This, you know, it's, it's it's a better year than ever to make it because of some all the parity in NCAA. So now would be a good time to make a run. Niagara coming out of the MAC again. That's the MAC has been a conference that's been up and down. They they kind of took a late lead in the conference. Now they're up there. The record isn't all that great, 16 and 11. But hey, as long as you lead the conference right now, you're in. So um, just depends on how the conference tournament shakes out. That's the way I see that right now. And finally, the East region. Um, Duke is my number one seed, uh, 23-3 and three out of the ACC. I would have them going up against Northeastern uh, out of the, the CAA. Now, the CAA obviously has gotten a lot weaker uh, since VCU left the conference. Um, so, uh, that you know, that was the big thing. The VCU left, it really left the Colonial a lot weaker with in terms of its teams. So, now Northeastern only an 18-10 and 10 team. Um, but 
they lead the uh, lead the conference right now, and uh, they would right now be that team that kind of gets one of those last uh, 16 spots uh, in the field. My 8-9 matchup, VCU-Colorado. That would be an entertaining one, too. Uh, Shaka Smart and that Havoc defense, that's fun to watch. Uh, VCU, I mean, the run of the Final Four a couple years ago was awesome, going from the first round all the way to the Final Four. Great, it was just great stuff. Grand, they beat my Boilermakers along the way, but hey, they proved it. They proved that they were a better team. Um, 21 and 6 out of the A10. Some big wins, beat Memphis, beat Belmont. So great stuff for them. Colorado, again, kind of on the bottom half of things of the Pac 12, but their numbers, again, just way too strong for me to leave them out of the field. 18 and 8 record. They should be okay. And come on, who wouldn't want to see a Duke VCU? Uh, rematch that that year that they beat Duke in the first round. Oh, that was so awesome! That, that was great stuff. And I picked that game too. I picked VCU to beat Duke that year, and they did. And I screamed at my television in joy. Oh, it was awesome! I, I would love to see that rematch. Uh, great stuff. My five twelve matchup would be Ohio State going up against the winner of one of those again one of those first round games. Uh, between Charlotte and Villanova. Um, those are my other two teams as my last four in Ohio State. Come on, we all know how good Ohio State is. They always tend to make the tournament every year. No issue with them. They should be okay. Charlotte and Villanova, these two teams really are kind of the, mm, we're in right now, but we're not safe right now. Charlotte really is kind of a, has a real shaky resume. Their RPI number always seems to hover around 50. Their SOS hovers around 100. But Charlotte does have two real solid wins against LaSalle and against Butler. Um, they do have one bad loss to George Washington, but um, they got a couple big games coming up. They got they got Temple on the 24th, so if they can beat Temple, that's a huge win for Charlotte. Uh, the next three games are all winnable. As long as they don't have any more bad losses, Charlotte should be okay, but again, not safe by any stretch. Villanova has really come on late and played really well. They have some big wins against some solid teams. Um, gosh, Villanova, they have beaten Louisville, Syracuse, Connecticut, although not eligible, uh, they that's still a, a top team. They would be an at-large if they were eligible. So the concern is the loss to Columbia earlier in the year that hangs over their head. But the next few games against Marquette tomorrow. They play at Pittsburgh on March 3rd. They play Georgetown March 6th. If they can at least win two of those games, Villanova should be in lock status. So that would be huge for Villanova. Um, and then my 413 is, again, Big East team, Georgetown against Bucknell. Um, Bucknell, again, rolling through the Patriot League as they usually do, but Lehigh certainly very close in the discussion. Of course, Lehigh was the other 15 seed last year that pulled an upset. Uh, let me see. Hmm, who'd they beat in the first round? Oh, yeah, they beat Duke. <laughs> Duke that I puke on them. Blah, you know, they, they beat them. So that was huge. Uh, and that was funny, and I laughed at the TV and, and, and said, ha, 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 enjoy um, for that. So, uh... <sighs> So, but Bucknell right now leading the way. Lehigh, but within a game of the Patriot League lead, but Bucknell uh, is in there. And, and Georgetown, obviously, a very good team um, to, to watch as well. Bottom half of the East region. My 6 11, uh, Oregon against Middle Tennessee. Um, Oregon, tough loss to Cal on the home floor on the last kind of last second shot, but Oregon still a really good team. 21 and 6 record. Um, they should be okay. Their numbers are a little bit gaudy and high, um, but even if I think if they don't win the conference tournament, I think Oregon will be okay. Middle Tennessee has just simply, again, it's kind of what Middle Tennessee did last year. They rolled through the Sun Belt in the regular season, but they, but, but last year they fell short in the conference tournament and missed the field. They had to go to the NIT. This year, they're really hoping it. I think they're really hoping it doesn't happen again. Middle Tennessee is just really dominating the Sun Belt. They're twenty-four and four in the regular season, which is just absolutely outstanding. Um, I haven't seen them play yet. From what I've heard, they are just a fun team to watch as well. So very dangerous, I think, if they win the Sun Belt tourney and get in the field. If they don't, the numbers again are up there, but eh, the quality wins the conference they're in. It's another one of those things where it's like the nails in the chalkboard. Do I put them in or no? 
there'll be something to watch. My 314 is Louisville Valparaiso. Uh, Louisville, again, we know how good Rick Pitino is out of the Big East. We know the job he does there, very good team. Valpo now has become kind of the, the head team in the Horizon League. Now that Butler is gone, um, Valpo, I think, uh, either, either got in last year, was close to getting in last year. Um, so they, they don't like now how the team to beat to get in. My 710 is UNLV and Creighton. Uh, UNLV 20 and 7 out of the Mountain West. UNLV now, I think, has five quality wins after that win over Colorado State, uh, <laughs> excuse me, last night. Um, they should be okay. Creighton, not safe by any stretch. They, I thought Creighton was a lock earlier in the year considering how well they were playing. They were ranked high in the country and they were just overall a very strong team. But they've had some tough losses of late. So certainly in right now, but not fully safe. And my 215 is Michigan State against Stony Brook. Uh, Michigan State, boy, what a fun team to watch out of the Big Ten. They are just awesome. We know the job that Tom Izzo does. The, the Izzo is a tough place to play at at uh, in Michigan State. 22-5 uh, record uh, right now. Stony Brook leading the American East. They pretty much led it most of the season. 20-6 um, and six record. Uh, I don't think they haven't been to the tournament in a while either, so that would definitely be huge for for their confidence. All right, that's the bracket part. Um, anyway, that's the official projection. Again, I'll also post it on my uh, Facebook notes page as well. Let me share with you guys also kind of the, the, the where I am at at the bubble picture right now. Um, I, I have uh, kind of like what I have everybody else does. I have kind of a three tier system. The should be in teams based on the numbers and what they've done. The in but not safe group, kind of like in the, they're in right now, but if something were to happen, they might drop out. And then the true bubble teams are below all of those right now. They're out of the field, but certainly they're not fully out of it yet. If they can win some games and some others fall short, they can get in the discussion. <laughs> oh, bless me. Oh, again, live video. Oh, man. <laughs> so here we go. Right now, I have three teams on the should be in the field list. That's Oklahoma, North Carolina, and Colorado. They, To me, those three would be a real shock if they missed this field. Um, the only problem is, again, the, the lack of quality wins there. Um, but as long as those teams don't have any missteps, I think they'll be okay uh, for the long haul. Um, the in but not safe list um, right now, um, safe list right now, uh, LaSalle. LaSalle had a, a golden opportunity, obviously a lock up a bit against Temple, but the numbers for me, they're still solid enough that they should be okay. The next three games they're scheduled, they're all against teams that are not projected right now to make the field. If they win at least two out of those three and get to 20 wins, I think LaSalle is golden and goes into Locksville. Southern Miss, um, 21 and 6, a 37 RPI. Again, they have the great numbers, but they really don't have any quality wins. They're 0 and 4 against the top 50. They got to beat Memphis in the rematch. If they don't, they'll probably have to win the Conference USA tourney to get in the field. The only reason, like I said, they're in the field now is because of Baylor's loss. Boise State, as I mentioned, 17 and 8, a 43 RPI. They have a great win over UNLV. The Creighton win, though, is not starting to look as great now because the Sheen is taking off that a little bit. Um, they beat Air Force in a fellow bubble game, and that was good for them. But if they beat Colorado State on March 2nd, they might even get that permanent berth to Locksville because that would be a huge profile booster for them. Um, Iowa State, 18-8, um, and 8, um, a 44 RPI. Uh, again, they have the two strong wins over Kansas State and Oklahoma, so they should be all right. But that win over Baylor inched them that much closer. If they beat Kansas in a couple days, Iowa State's golden and are in the field for sure. Temple, as I mentioned, one of the last four teams in right now, 18-8, uh, a 45 RPI. They got their fourth quality win with that win over LaSalle. They've beaten St. Louis uh, in Syracuse now. And Charlotte was a quality win, but Charlotte just recently fell out of the top 50. So really, that's not a, uh, a quality win anymore to, to, to speak of. Um, but, you know, but again, but also the problem is they have three ugly losses. They lost to Canisius, St. Bonaventure, and Duquesne. They still linger. But as the numbers rise, the profile does look better. 
if they can, you know, if if they beat Charlotte again at Phil Bubble Team, might get him over the hump. Maybe not if Charlotte regresses a bit. It all depends on the numbers. Cal, 17 and 9, 46 RPI. I told you guys, this looks like a tournament team. Um, they got their fourth quality win, swept Oregon. Um, as long as there are any missteps, they look like a tournament team to me. Speaking of Creighton, 22 and 6, a 47 RPI. Um, they're now right in the middle of the teeter totter. Um, they got to beat St. Mary's in the bracket buster, I think. They got to beat Wichita State and not suffer any more bad losses to truly be safe. St. Mary's, as I mentioned on my last four in, uh, 23 and 5, a 50 RPI. You know, and you know the sweep of BYU, it helps. Um, you know, and and you would think a 23 win team wouldn't miss, um, but. The Gales don't lead the conference, don't have any top 50 wins, their SOS is terrible, you got to beat Creighton in the bracket buster because they're still not fully safe yet. That Creighton-St. Mary's game is huge for bubble purposes. Charlotte, 18-7, and 7, 52 RPI. Uh, I have them as one of the last four in. They can't really afford a bad loss, but they don't really have any quality win opportunities ahead. So for Charlotte, it's just stay the course and keep on winning. And then finally, my last team on the uh, in but not safe list is Villanova, one of my last four in. Uh, three strong wins, like I said, Louisville, Syracuse, Connecticut. The loss to Columbia, though, hangs heavy on them. If they can beat Marquette and win at Pitt, Villanova could be in Locksville. All right, true bubble teams now. These are the teams that right now I have out of the field, but that certainly could change if they win some games or if other teams start to fall back to them. Uh, these teams' fates could change. Obviously, the big question mark is Kentucky. Uh, 18 and 8, 48 RPI. They're on my first four out list. Um, they followed up that 30 point blowout loss to Tennessee with a win, albeit an ugly one, 74 uh, 70 against Vanderbilt. It is clear to even the basketball observer out there that this is a clearly different team without their best player, Nerlens Noel. Um, the win reel, though, doesn't get them in because, again, the 0-4 record against the top 50, that's the big bugaboo to me. Um, winning out, again, as I said, the same line applies. Winning out may be paramount, but even that might not be enough if some other teams don't fall back to Kentucky. They, they don't get some quality wins in there. Sticking with the SEC, boy, there's a lot of SEC teams in discussion. Mississippi, 19 and 7, 57 RPI. After that loss to South Carolina, they dropped to my first four out list. The numbers aren't great, and they only have that win over Missouri to hang their hat on. Um, the next three games, though, still are all against the non-tournament teams. This, the profile, though, to me, it's on life support. If they have more bad losses, they can't afford it. They will not make this field, at least not to me. Um, Alabama. Uh, 18 and 8, 58 RPI. They only have the win against Kentucky, which doesn't look so great anymore, and a bad loss to Auburn. That really hurts things. They can't afford a bad loss. Beating Florida on March 2nd, it may be imperative to warrant that strong look. Uh, UMass again, 16 and 9, and 59 RPI. They're they're a true long shot now after the loss to St. Bonaventure. They're pretty much uh, on the life support as well. Uh, I mentioned Baylor. Um, again, after that loss to Iowa State, they dropped to the first four out list, 16 and 10 now, 60 RPI. The best win is against Oklahoma State. The other was against that uh, fading Kentucky team. Um, now you have now for, for Baylor, you got to beat Oklahoma, you got to beat Kansas State. I think you have to beat them both. BYU, 20 and 9, a 62 RPI. Looked solid earlier in the year, but again, they, they missed the opportunity against St. Mary's last night. They're still 0 4 against the top 50. Um, there's still Gonzaga left to play, but even that might not be enough to save the Cougars' chances. Indiana State, it's on life support. I mean, we got to be honest. 16 and 11, a 64 RPI. Three good wins against Miami, but six, six bad losses. Head scratcher. You know, it, it's just, it's hanging by a thread. Arizona State is my other team. It's on my first four out list. Uh, 20 and 7, a 67 RPI. They're 9-5 and five in a very strong Pac-12, but the good wins have only come against UCLA and twice against Colorado that still isn't fully safe yet. Plus, their SOS is above 100. Beating UCLA again on February 27th, it's a must for Arizona State. Maryland, 18-8 uh, record, 68. You follow an upset of Duke with a loss to 150 RPI Boston College? Okay. 
Um, this is just a huge dent to a profile that was really solid beforehand, so very, very tough to uh, stomach for Maryland. Um, and Arkansas, 17 and 9, 72 RPI. Three great wins, Oklahoma, Florida, Missouri, but also the loss to South Carolina. They survived a huge scare against Georgia, only beat Georgia by two points. If they can sweep the Gators and not take another bad loss, Arkansas definitely starts to have more merit. Air Force, tough for them, 15 and 10, 73 RPI. Um, they're 4 and 8 on the road. That's really what hurts them. They missed up the opportunity against Boise State. Um, and now it may take beating San Diego State again on March 6th and no losses to really keep their slim hopes alive. Virginia, 18 and 8, 76 RPI. Uh, missed the opportunity against Miami. Now they're going to have to beat Duke without suffering any more bad losses. That's just how it's going to be for Virginia. And again, I was still barely on this list. They didn't have a game recently, but they're still barely on the list just because their RPI is still up there at 79. But uh, again, there's a chance because of how this bubble is. All right, again, the big games tonight real quick. St. Louis at Butler. That's a huge game in the A-10 at 7 o'clock. Both, both teams are pretty much locks to make the tournament, but that's a huge game for conference purposes. Harvard is at Brown at 7 o'clock. As long as Harvard doesn't stumble, as I said, they'll win the Ivy's bid. And then the two bracket buster games tonight, North Dakota State at Akron at 7, Stephen F. Austin at Long Beach State at 9. All right, guys, that's it for this Tracking the Madness edition. Um, as I've said, I'm probably going to try now to make a one bracket a week um, and, then, and let you guys know uh, how it's broken down, um, give you bubble updates, everything like that. Um, so next week, it'll probably be on Thursday, the 28th. That's my next, uh, that's one of my two days off next week. So um, I will probably post it then. So thank you guys again so much for all your support. And uh, again, if you have any thoughts on, on my bracket or teams you have in or don't have in, bubble teams, discussions, uh, feel free to share it in the comments or any questions. I'll try to answer as many as I can. I know, but my scheduling is pretty tight. So uh, let me guys know what you think and uh, have a great weekend. Watch a lot of basketball on Saturday, and uh, God bless. Thanks, guys.